Hi everyone! In this week's scholarship chemistry tutorial session, I'm taking up question 4a from the 2017 exam. This is a really neat question where we are determining the amount of ethanol in a bottle of wine and comparing it to the amount that's claimed on the label. So it's supposed to claim around 13.5% ethanol by volume, uh, plus or minus 1.5% units, so it could contain anywhere between 12 to 15% ethanol, and that'd be fine. We're given a lot of information right away, but we'll break it down as we go through the question. Uh, basically, we start with one milliliter sample volume of uh, the wine, and we are mixing it in with acidified dichromate and refluxing it. And we know from organic chemistry that when we do that, we are going to fully oxidize the ethanol uh, through to uh, an aldehyde and through to a carboxylic acid. Why this is done will become clear in just a short bit. The next thing that's done after oxidizing the ethanol is to make a standard solution of iron 2 plus. This is made by uh, just dissolving a certain amount into a certain volume and doing an easy level 2 NCA type calculation. The reason why we're making this standard solution is, uh, well, two reasons. Uh, we're going to use this solution to do uh, a standardization of the dichromate solution, which we used to uh, oxidize the ethanol in the first step. And once we have standardized the dichromate solution, we are going to use the iron 2 plus solution for one more thing, and that is to determine how much dichromate is remaining in the wine mixture after it's done its job of oxidizing the ethanol. Why are we determining the initial concentration of dichromate and the final remaining concentration of dichromate? The reason is, if we know the initial and final amount, we can subtract one from the other to calculate how much dichromate was consumed in the reaction where it oxidized the ethanol. If we know how much dichromate was consumed when it oxidized the ethanol, we can use stoichiometric ratios to convert the moles of dichromate consumed into an amount of ethanol that must have been present in the sample. And that will help us answer the question uh, about whether or not the amount of ethanol in the wine is uh, within the 12 to 15 percent range. So let's first make up that standard solution of iron 2 plus. Easy enough, we got this mass here and this volume. We're going to use two equations uh, from level 2 and CEA. Our first one being C is equal to N over V, and the second equation uh, moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass, and we end up with this standard solution of iron 2 plus. Now we're going to plug this concentration of iron 2 plus into the next step where we will determine the uh, concentration of dichromate we had initially. So I'm going to calculate the moles of iron 2 plus uh, involved in this standardization titration by taking the concentration of iron 2 plus, which we just figured out, and multiplying it by the volume, which we're using in this uh, uh, titration, which is 25 mils, and we get this number of moles of iron 2 plus. And we're going to now apply the 6 to 1 stoichiometric ratio in this equation given in the question to determine uh, the number of moles of dichromate consumed in this titration. And we get this number here. And now we are going to finally uh, determine the concentration of dichromate in the initial dichromate solution by taking that number of moles and dividing it by the average titra uh, value of this titration. Great. So we've just determined the initial concentration of dichromate. Now we are going to use the iron 2 plus standard solution for one last thing, which is to determine how much dichromate is remaining after it's done its job oxidizing the ethanol. So I'm uh, once again plugging in that concentration of iron 2 plus, multiplying it by the volume of iron used in this titration procedure. This time we're using just a 10 miller a 10 milliliter aliquot of iron 2 plus and I'll once again use the 1 to 6 ratio here to convert moles of iron to moles of dichromate and I will divide it by the average titer value for this titration here and I'll get a final concentration of dichromate that's what the F stands for so the final concentration now that I know the initial and final concentration of dichromate I can subtract one from the other if I convert it to moles to figure out how many moles were consumed in the oxidation of ethanol so here, like I just said, I've converted a concentration of dichromate into moles, and I'm going to subtract the uh, uh, final amount of moles from the initial amount. So here I've got my equation here. I've plugged in the initial amount minus the uh, final amount, and here's how much must have been consumed in the oxidation of ethanol. 
Great, so I figured out how much uh, dichromate was consumed, and now I can use the stoichiometric ratio in the second equation they've provided to convert moles of dichromate into moles of ethanol using this 2 to 3 ratio. Now that I've figured out the moles of ethanol, it doesn't take too much more work to convert moles into a percentage in our wine sample. I'll convert moles of ethanol into a mass using the molar mass given in the question, and I'll convert mass into a volume because this is a percent by volume basis, not by mass. So I'll take the uh, mass of ethanol and divide by the density to get a volume, and I've calculated that this one milliliter sample of wine contains 12 percent uh, ethanol, which is just within our range of 12 to 15 percent. Hopefully that made sense to you. Um, so it was quite complex, all the information they gave you at the beginning, uh, but basically we just created a standard solution of iron to standardize our oxidizer, and we compared the concentration of the oxidizer with uh, the concentration of the oxidizer after it's done its job of oxidizing the ethanol. And that enabled us to figure out how much ethanol was consumed, and uh, that's how we answered this question about the concentration of ethanol in the wine sample. Thanks very much.